Okay, everyone, today I'm going to be eating a scorpion, stinger and all, to see if it's safe to eat. And then I'll also be eating some super worms and crickets to see how they taste. And then I'll talk about why you should also be eating these bugs. Okay, so I have here a Manchurian scorpion, also known as the golden Chinese scorpion. These are venomous. You can see that its stinger is still on there. And also what's cool about this scorpion, like other scorpions, is if you turn out the lights and shine a black light on it, look what it looks like. <laughs> look how awesome that is. So here's my black light here. Look how bright it gets when I shine it on it. So this bright glow comes from a phosphorescent substance in the exoskeleton of the scorpion. And scientists don't know exactly what it's for, but they think it protects the scorpion from sunlight, it helps them find each other, and it might even confuse their prey to have this glowing thing in front of them. It's also beneficial to humans because we can use a black light and see if there's any scorpions hiding in the sand or in our house. Okay, so my first question is, is will my mouth glow in the UV light after I eat the scorpion? That'll be one test I'll do right after I eat it. Okay, here we go. See what this tastes like. Ow. The stinger poked my tongue. Not bad. Here's another of its pinchers. Okay, let's look in my mouth. <laughs> okay, let me cleanse my palate real quick. Let's try some of these super worms. Okay, how about I just pop three of these in my mouth? Crunchy. Also not bad. Weird aftertaste though. <laughs> I like the scorpion better actually. Ew. Yeah, not a fan of the super worms. We'll eat four crickets. Okay, so why did I just eat a bunch of insects? Well, a bunch of insects and one arachnid. Well, the answer is because you should probably be eating more insects as well. Let me tell you why. So around 70% of the world's fresh water goes to agriculture. Now different animals need different amounts of water. And for comparison, I wanna show you four different types of protein or meat. I have here a cricket, a little piece of beef, a little piece of ham, and a little piece of chicken. These all weigh around the same, around 0.1 grams. Now let me show you how much water it took to raise this equivalent amount of meat of each of these different animals here. So to raise this one cricket here, it required around 0.1 milliliters. So just this tiny little bit of water right here. Now crickets don't require that much water because they get most of their water from the food they eat. So you don't have to give, any, give them really much external water about that much per cricket. Okay, moving over to our chicken here. So for about that much meat of chicken, it required around 0.23 liters of water. So look at that, for just that much amount of meat, it required around 230 milliliters of water. And for a pig, around 350 milliliters per 0.1 grams. And then for a piece of cow meat around this size, it requires 2.2 liters of water. Okay, so look at this difference. To produce that much cow meat, it requires 2.2 liters. That much pig meat requires 350 milliliters, and that much chicken is 230 milliliters. And then for that much cricket, just that much water. So you can see how much less water we need to use to produce the equivalent amount of meat of insects versus other animals. And that's just water. If you look at the amount of land needed to grow the equivalent amount of meat of a cow versus a cricket, a cow would need this much, a cricket would need this much. And then you have a ton of other benefits as well. Insects are low in saturated fat. They have a ton of vitamins in them, a lot of fiber, and a lot of protein as well. Now, I used to live in Cambodia. I lived there for two years. And while I was in Cambodia, I learned to eat insects regularly. Now, I ate all kinds of insects there. There were a ton of beetles and a ton of crickets. 
Crickets, they kind of just eat like popcorn on the street. People are always selling them. You can get a bag of them and just eat them. And they're actually pretty good because overall they just taste like whatever they were fried in. So it just tastes like something that was fried and good, whatever flavoring they put on it. Here's a picture of me with a bunch of tarantulas on me before we fried them up and ate them. And Cambodia isn't the only place that eats insects. Countries all over the world eat insects. So why not in the US or other Western countries? Well, a lot of it has to do just with the stigma of insects. We think of them as creepy and gross, but some people are trying to change that. There are recipes that you can find online for cricket tacos and other kinds of insect dishes. So it definitely shouldn't be outside of our mindset to consider eating bugs in the future. They're definitely more environmentally friendly than any other protein out there and have more vitamins and unsaturated fat as well. So let me know in the comments section if I've convinced you to start eating bugs now. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to subscribe. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.